Hey, so we're going to demonstrate uh, our first piece, which is basically just for the composters that are passively composting, as we refer to that as cold composting or just the dump and run method. And you've got maybe a kitchen pail that you collect and it gets full, and now you want to figure out what to do with it. So we're going to take this out to our compost bin and show you how to do that. Okay, so this is the compost bin that we're going to dump our material in. And again, it could be a different variety of different compost bins. Uh, but here's the one that we've got going to dump our material in. And so we are going to uh, just keep building up on our system. This is from the last time we dumped. And we just sprinkle our materials into our bin. And those are our composting greens, which are the wet materials. And we always cover them up with a brown or a dry material. In this case, it's going to be newspaper. But as you learned in the webinar, there are lots of different kinds of browns you could use to cover. We don't use the slick that goes in the recycling. And the nice thing about newspaper is it's all uh, soy-based ink here locally, so that's going to be just fine for composting. And then the next layer will go right on top of this, so will be our next pail, and then some more browns. Okay, we're back at our bin. We're now going to uh, pretend that we're actually making a active bin, which would be a full batch, and this would be uh, close to 100 gallons of material. And you can see we're kind of three quarters of the way full. Our last layer was a brown layer. So we're now going to put in some greens. And as we've mentioned before, we want things in about a two inch, two to four inch. So we're going to just quickly chop these up so they're a little bit smaller. And we're going to do our layer of greens. And this just helps the bacteria have surface area and then they can secrete their enzymes and start breaking this all down. We've got some weeds that we've collected from the garden. And then we're going to cover that with a layer of browns. And this cardboard actually is a little bit moistened which makes it easier to break into small two to four inch pieces. And this is actually a pretty good brown source that folks have available to them. And you can always find more of it if you need it, but you can use dried leaves. And we've got a couple of those dried leaves here. So we'll use some of those as well. They do need to be dried and kind of broken up a little so they don't mat down. If we want to make sure we've got oxygen in here. So we would just fill this all the way to the top and it's optional. You can kind of cover it up with some cardboard just to help with the moisture levels. And that's something you want, you're going to want to monitor. And we close it up and we'll probably wait uh, take its temperature reading and then turn it when it's needed. Okay, as we mentioned, uh, it is important to get your pieces into smaller pieces. One thing I like to do uh, is I can just chop real easily with a chop shovel. I find that to be a pretty effective way to get things into smaller pieces. And then that goes right into your bin. And we'll cover that up with our brown material. And we're all done. Okay, next we're going to demonstrate how you turn a bin if you're doing that active batch or hot composting. And I like to use a thermometer just to see how things are heating up for me. So we'll throw that into our bin. And you can see 
you can see the temperature is starting to climb so we're into the steady and now we're over a hundred so we're active and that's a good sign as it keeps going up so we're in that 100 looks like we're about to get to 120 and it's still going up so this bin's pretty hot we certainly could let it sit for a little bit longer if we wanted to uh, but we're going to show you how to give this a turn looks like we're probably going to go all the way up to about 130. okay so the nice thing about these bins is you take the top off and it becomes the bottom and if you didn't want to fully turn this bin, you could just use a tool like this or that wing dinger that we talked about in the webinar and just kind of mix up your bin like so. But I think it's just as easy to grab these handles that we added and you lift this off just like a sandcastle mold and you put the sleeve there and then we're just going to take our pitchfork and as you can see all this material uh, is starting to transform into compost so we're going to grab our pitchfork and we just scoop it in here give it a little fluff this is a good opportunity to see how how it smells if your moisture levels are right and you can see all this steam coming off and it actually smells nice and sweet so this is going to be compost probably in less than eight weeks this will be ready to go on the garden that's a nice mulch what's amazing with this bin is there were 15 gallons of oranges that I put in here less than a week ago and you cannot see them and the ones you can see are very close to being decomposed you can see sometimes when you put in pieces that are too big we'll just leave that in there for now but those are things that probably should be clipped initially and still smelling good if it was smelling a little bit pungent this would be an opportunity to add in more brown material and I'll demonstrate how to do that just in case you were turning your bin and it seemed a little smelly this is a good opportunity to just add up some smaller pieces of browns and again that could be dried leaves which I've got a few of and that'll take care of any of the extra moisture and smell you may have to do that several times depending on how wet and smelly your bin is but this bin's in pretty good shape here's one of those 15 gallons of oranges Take our shovel and just move in the rest of this material. And it is quite amazing how you can move from identifiable materials to ones that you just are becoming becoming soil. And are brown and crumbly and smelling like the earth. So all in all, the turning just takes about five minutes. It gives you an opportunity to get up close and personal with your bin and make any adjustments you might need. 
and it can save you some money on going to the gym. Cover it up with our moisture barrier. And put our lid on. And we're probably ready to let this sit for a good week. And it's gonna be very close to compost. Okay, we're gonna talk about curing. Uh, so I can turn these compost bins around in about eight weeks but you know they're still breaking down a little bit and i used to have just a big curing pile but i found actually traces of rats which we do not ever want so i stepped up and purchased one of these giant seattle composters which hold about 150 gallons of material almost a cubic yard and when my material is kind of in that dark brown crumbly stage but not quite ready to go onto the garden. Uh, this is where I store it to let it cure. And you can see it's still cooking. So there's still decomposition going on. Uh, when this gets down to an ambient temperature, then I know uh, the compost is stable. And once this is cured, I can mulch it right on the garden or I can screen it and have a really fine compost for potting mix, putting on my garden 